Hello, my friends, and welcome to a lesson exploring the work of water. It's a lesson that might carry you away with the way it flows. It's pretty amazing. Well, there's also an experiment in this lesson that you can try at home to learn even more and explore more about the river. Let's check out what that looks like. Hey friends, this next part of the lesson, I'm going to do with things you might have at home. So you're welcome to recreate this. All you need is a window box and some dirt or soil in it. You fill it right up to the top and you'll need a watering can filled with water. Look at the land. Some parts of the land are higher and some parts are lower. When it rains, it rains all over the land, on the high parts, on the low parts, and on everything in between. You may remember from our work with the three states of matter that liquids flow and they push down and sideways. As it rains, the water flows over the land and pushes down into land, moving smaller objects out of the way, taking some of these objects with it, and finding ways around larger, unmovable objects. The strongest flow usually occurs on the steepest inclines. As the water flows over and through the land, it carries material with it, and it shapes the land. It carves a path through it. It carves and carries things away with it. These paths usually wander and are seldom straight. We say that rivers can meander. The flowing path that the water carves into the land is what we call a river. So, did you get to watch that river as it did the work of water? shaping and carving, carrying and depositing? Well, let's find out how we can explore the parts of that river. And you know, you can draw your own, and that would be pretty fantastic. You get to decide the path it takes and everything like that, or just in case you need something to help you out and get started, there is something you can print out. It's a drawing that I made of a river, and we can go ahead and color it and we can label it. Well, let's get started with coloring and pow! All right, Talk about a quick coloring job, right? Look at that mighty river as it flows from the highlands down to the lowlands, carving through the land and carrying things with it. And even at the bottom here, we can get sort of a nice view of what's happening. So let's talk about the parts of the river. The place where the river flows from, very often up in the highlands, is called its source. Let's go ahead and label that. Now, something really cool about that is you can see the bottom of the river. It's pretty cool. It can be hard to see that sometimes if the river is very deep, but on ours, we've got a cross section and there's a name for the bottom of the river. It's where the river sleeps. It's the bed. Oh, nice and comfortable. And then there's also the sides of the river. These bits where the water has carved down and left that higher land on the sides. And those are known as the banks. We can label one of those. 
the riverbank. Fantastic. Now, the river itself and that sort of movement it takes is called the path. The path is where the river flows. And very often it will wiggle and wander and meander. And we can label one of those meanderings. How about that one right there? Okay, now a river always flows somewhere, right? And very often it's to the ocean. And let's say the ocean is right just beyond this paper. We can't see it. Maybe we're standing with our back to the ocean. But this area where the river outputs is known as its mouth. Just like the place where you output. All of your fantastic ideas that come flowing right out of you, right? So not too difficult to label the parts of the river. And maybe if you try that experiment, you could make little signs to label all those parts. Hey, you might even see some other parts too. So maybe this is the point where you go and do a little bit of research and find out what some of those other parts are called. For example, sometimes when a river gets to its mouth, it widens out extremely, gets really shallow and silty. A lot like that really famous river in Egypt, right? Well, that's called a delta. And actually, here in Richland, we have a delta nearby too. And it might be pretty cool for you to go explore it and to see that river and to remember all of these fantastic parts. Well, I hope this lesson flowed for you. It has for me. I'll see you again soon.